Hi everyone, Joe here. It's so great to see you all again. I'd like to welcome you to the very first episode of How to Be a Gentleman. And this is going to be part of a new series I'm creating called The Gentleman Series. I don't know whether or not the analytics from my channel are available to the public, but approximately 70% of all of my viewers are male. And so I thought introducing this series of books written by John Bridges would be a great way to kind of inject some energy of civility and etiquette into the world. I got these books when I was 10 from my mother, so about 15 years ago, and she gave me three of them, and he, John Bridges may have written more, I don't know, I've never looked, but uh, the three I have are How to Be a Gentleman, the second is What a Gentleman Says, and the third is How a Gentleman Dresses. And I try to read either this book, the How to Be a Gentleman, or the What a Gentleman Says book at least once a year. And even though the information inside some might consider common sense uh, advice or suggestions, as many of you probably know, common sense isn't all that common, so it never hurts to have a, a refresher and a, a place to go to be able to reference some of this information. So. The way the book is written, is pretty straightforward. It's written mostly in bullet points. It's broken down into chapters, and this is a, a general topic book, so it'll cover a lot of things. Um, so this covers a sh short chapter about dressing, this covers uh, a short chapter about saying the right thing, so uh, giving a party, going to a party, friends, going to the office, uh, and a number of other things. So this is the, the general book, and then the subsequent books that he's put out I think are more um, targeted to one of these particular topics. And so like I said, they're mostly bullet points, so two or three pages of bullet points, and then you'll have one page of a more detailed topic, and then it goes back to bullet points. So it's a really easy read, really short. Um, I'll go ahead and read the introduction, because it's just a page and a half, very quick, and then we'll go ahead and get right into, right into it. So, introduction. For decades, maybe centuries, Men have depended on women to set the rules for polite behavior. Sometimes that woman was the man's mother. Sometimes she was his wife. Sometimes she was a famous etiquette expert, like Amy Vanderbilt or Emily Post. There comes a time in every man's life when his mother isn't around anymore. Married or not, he is expected to go to parties and to entertain. He has business associates to deal with and co-workers with whom he must get along. Such moments can fill a guy with needless terror. He may get frustrated trying to tie a bow tie or set his table correctly. He may find himself fumbling when he needs to introduce two of his best friends. The truth of the matter is being a gentleman is not rocket science. Being a gentleman requires a little logic, a bit of forethought, and a great deal of consideration for others. It is not about complicated rules and convoluted instructions. Instead, it is about trying to make life easier for other people. It is about honestly and sincerely being a nice guy. For a guy, the noblest virtues are camaraderie, dependability, and unswerving loyalty. It confuses him to think that his future might be ruined if he ate his entree with a salad fork. That is why this book spells out what a man really needs to know if he plans to make his way in this world. Simply acting like a gentleman is not enough. It is being a gentleman that is important and that means thinking of others, 
being there when you are needed, and knowing when you are not needed. It is what you do and who you are, an accumulation of gentlemanly behaviors over the course of a lifetime. That makes a man a gentleman. It truly is possible for a man to learn to be a gentleman if he has the direction he needs. For that reason, the women of the world will be glad this book exists. Chapter 1. A Gentleman Experience is Real Life. A gentleman knows how others feel, excuse me, a gentleman knows how to make others feel comfortable. A gentleman knows how to make a grilled cheese at 2 a.m. and an omelet at 7 a.m. If a gentleman has a cold, especially if he is running a fever, he declines all social invitations. If it is possible, he even stays away from the office. Even if he lives alone, a gentleman never drinks milk directly from the container. A gentleman attends the theater. Because he respects other people, a gentleman always shows up on time for any performance, whether it is a concert, a motion picture, or a stage play. If he arrives late, he does not attempt to be seated until there is a suitable break in the performance. In the case of a play or a musical comedy, his tardiness may require him to wait until intermission. In every case, he follows the instructions of the ushers. He, if he behaves himself, a gentleman knows, a kindly usher may quietly slip him into a seat on the back row. A gentleman never forgets that watching a live performance is not the same thing as watching a TV show in his own living room. He does not talk during the performance, even, du er, even during the very loudest of music or sound effects. He does not shift about in his seat unnecessarily, and if he has a tendency to cough, he always carries a cough drop. Should a gentleman find himself surprised by an uncontrollable coughing gag, he leaves the auditorium, both for his own good and for the good of others. At a concert or any other musical performance, a gentleman does not applaud until the end of a complete musical number. If he is unsure, he would be well advised not to start an ovation alone. If a gentleman is lost, he admits it. He readily asks for directions. A gentleman does not pick his nose in public. In fact, he is wise if he does not pick his nose in private, since bad habits are far too easily created. When a gentleman walks his dog, he assumes responsibility for his pet's poop. When a gentleman arrives late for a church service, he waits for a suitable pause in the service before slipping, as unobtrusively as possible, into a pew at the back. In a theater, church, or any place where people have gathered to hear music, a gentleman always turns his beeper off. A gentleman attends a wedding. Obviously, a gentleman only attends weddings to which he has been invited. If his invitation does not say, and guest, he attends alone, even if a reception follows. He arrives on time and sits on the appropriate side of the aisle. The left side, if he is a friend of the bride, the right side if he is a friend of the groom. If he knows them both, he sits on the side with the greater number of empty seats. During the ceremony, he stands when everyone else does, and he does not chat during the music. At the reception, he speaks to the bride and groom and to their parents, no matter how many divorces are involved. If there is dancing, he does his part, partnering as many bridesmaids as possible. A gentleman does not carry a cellular phone into a theater. If a gentleman has left a message for another person, he does not leave bandering follow -up, uh, badgering follow-up calls, especially if no deadline is involved. A gentleman is not obligated to return unsolicited messages or voicemail. A gentleman who happens to be a doctor checks his beeper with an usher or changes it to the silent setting. However, if he is a real estate agent out for an evening at the theater, he leaves his beeper or cellular home, phone at home. A real estate closing is not a life-threatening emergency. A gentleman does not hesitate to screen his calls. In the workout room, a gentleman does not hog the weights. If a gentleman tends to have athlete's foot, he wears shower shoes at the gym. A gentleman may do what he pleases in his own shower, but he does not shave in the shower at the gym. He never takes another gentleman's towel. 
If a gentleman shaves at the health club, he always rinses out the sink. A gentleman knows that the gym is a place for working out, not merely a place for socializing, and certainly not a place for showing off. A gentleman attends a funeral. A gentleman recognizes that a funeral is a time for paying respects. He wears a dark suit, a white shirt, a somber tie, and a pair of black shoes. If there is a wake, a reception, or a visitation with the deceased family, he arrives on time and waits quietly in the receiving line. He keeps his remarks simple, out of respect for the grieving person's overwrought emotions. A statement such as, I am sorry about your loss, Mrs. Jones. Your husband was a wonderful person, is appropriate. During the service, a gentleman does not engage the other mourners in conversation. He sits where the ushers tell him to sit. He always signs the book. A gentleman may attend the funeral of anyone he has known personally or professionally, at least if they have been on speaking terms. If the deceased person has shown him particular kindness, especially if he has ever been entertained in the deceased person's home, a gentleman makes a point to show his respects. For reasons of courtesy and safety, a gentleman does not dawdle at the automated teller machine. If other people are in line behind him, he does not waste time checking all his savings account balances. He completes his transaction and moves on. A gentleman never eats lunch while he is behind the wheel of a vehicle. A gentleman knows how to behave in other people's churches. If the congregation stands, he stands. He does not, however, have to cross himself, bow, or kneel. If a gentleman attends synagogue and is offered a yarmulke, the traditional head covering worn by men at conservative and orthodox Jewish services, he puts it on. If a gentleman attends a great many bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, he buys his own yarmulke. A gentleman does not assume it is the other person's responsibility to provide the condoms. A gentleman walks through a door. A gentleman always glances behind him when he walks through a door. He never slams a door in another person's face. It does not matter whether the other person is a man or a woman. If it is a revolving door, a gentleman pays more attention than usual. He steps ahead, does not move too fast, pushes the door open, and makes the world a little easier for the person after him. That is, after all, why gentlemen exist. He never shares a revolving door section with another person. He respects their space. Besides, in big cities, that's where pickpockets do their business. A gentleman does not put his groceries on the conveyor belt with another shopper's purchases. If a gentleman eats in bed, he always changes the, the sheets. When a gentleman is finished with the dryer, he cleans the lint filter. At the laundromat, a gentleman never takes another person's laundry out of the washer or dryer, no matter how long he has been waiting. If he is in a hurry, he asks for the attendant's assistance. If there is no attendant, he chooses another laundromat. A gentleman goes through a checkout line. A gentleman always keeps an accurate count of the items in his grocery cart. He does not try to slip through the express checkout line if he has exceeded the posted limit. On the other hand, if he has only a couple of items and a kind person invites him to step ahead in line, he graciously accepts the offer. He is not bashful about asking for the type of bag he wants, but otherwise he does not make any serious demands on the cashier. When it is time to pay the total, a gentleman has his checkbook, cash, or credit card ready. A gentleman does not cause a delay in the checkout line. He realizes that there are people with spoiling milk in their baskets and hungry children at home. As a gentleman, he knows it is his job to make the checkout lines of life move along. If a gentleman must inconvenience other people by stepping over their feet in a theater or when leaving his seat on an airplane, he offers an occasional excuse me. If he must leave the theater in the middle of the performance, he does not say anything and does his best not to step on toes. A gentleman does not use his car horn indiscriminately. On the other hand, he is not sheepish about giving an occasional honk to avert disaster. A gentleman uses his turn signals. A gentleman parks his car carefully. He does not bang his car door into the car next to him. If he scratches another car, he leaves a note. The etiquette of the cigar. 
A gentleman savors a cigar in the same way that he savors a good glass of whiskey, only on occasion and never to excess. He knows it is an acquired taste and that to some non-smokers its fumes may even be more repellent than cigarette smoke. Before smoking, a gentleman makes sure cigars are permitted. Once his cigar is lit, he does not puff so that noxious clouds of smoke surround his face, and he does not allow his cigar to accumulate a long, fragile column of ash that might shatter, spoiling his shirt front or the table linens. When a gentleman's cigar is finished, he puts it in the ashtray. When he is in a public place and in the company of others, he resists all temptation to chew on a sodden stump of stogie. A gentleman takes an airplane flight. Almost invariably, the passengers on an airplane have been brought together by a mix of chance and necessity. A gentleman understands that, in such situations, it is important for everyone to abide by the rules. He brings on board only the amount of luggage that is permitted. He is careful when he stows it overhead to prevent injury to his fellow passengers and to himself. If a bag or parcel is small enough, he stows it under the seat in front of him. He does not intrude on space that is allotted for another person's use. He sits in the seat that is assigned to him. If he has sat in the wrong seat, and if he is asked to move, he does not argue about it. He gets up and finds the place to which he has been assigned. On the other hand, he feels no obligation to give up his rightful seat to another person. If it is at all possible, a gentleman stays in his seat throughout the entire flight. A trip to the bathroom is almost the only excuse to do otherwise. On long flights, a gentleman with a health condition does not hesitate to leave his seat for a short time to stretch out his legs and get his blood circulating. When he must leave his seat, a gentleman excuses himself as unobtrusively as possible, making sure not to step on other passengers' feet. An airplane flight is one of the few instances in life when it is entirely appropriate for two people to be together for several hours and never speak at all. They may begin the flight as strangers and end in the same way, without anyone having reason to feel neglected or abused. If the hour is terribly early, early or extremely late, a gentleman does not phone a private residence. A gentleman turns the television down after 10 o'clock. If he must listen to music at 3 o'clock in the morning, he buys himself a good pair of headphones. At sporting events, a gentleman feels free to stand up and shout during exciting moments. Otherwise, he keeps his seat. He does not begrudge the other team its victory. If his own team is the victor, he does not taunt the opposition. A gentleman does not take his pets to other people's houses unless he is specifically urged to do so. A gentleman does not feel obliged to invite other people's pets to his house. If a gentleman is around another person's dog, he does not tease that dog or encourage it to bark. A gentleman does not touch other people's children unless he is invited to do so. Neither does he overexcite them. To establish a friendly relationship with the hotel concierge, a gentleman asks the concierge for some necessary service, one that is important enough to justify a substantial chip, a tip. If a bellhop offers to assist a gentleman in hailing a cab, a gentleman accepts the offer, understanding that a tip is implied. A gentleman never feels that he must say pleasant things about unpleasant people. Even when describing pleasant people, he does not stretch the truth. Goodness, when accurately described, can stand on its own. If a gentleman must leave the dinner table, he simply says, excuse me. It does not matter whether he is headed for the telephone booth or the bathroom. No further explanation is necessary. If a gentleman borrows another person's property, whether it is a power drill, a new bestseller, or a set of salad forks, he sets a deadline by which he plans to return it. He keeps to that deadline and returns the property in good condition. A gentleman does not adjust his crotch in public. A gentleman knows that it is a very dangerous thing to ask another person, what do you want for Christmas? At best, the answer will be, I don't know, surprise me. At worst, it will be something a gentleman cannot provide. In either case, the answer will be something a gentleman does not want to hear. He, will be better, he would be better off if he watches and listens closely. A gentleman never makes a date out of desperation. If a gentleman must chew tobacco, he chews it outdoors. He does not keep a drool cup on his desk. 
When a gentleman recognizes friends and acquaintances at other tables in a restaurant, he feels free to greet them, but only in the least intrusive way possible. He may stop by their table to greet them cordially, but he does not interrupt their dinner f or their conversation for long. A gentleman always offers to share his umbrella. When a gentleman makes his way down a row in a crowded theater, he faces the people who are already in their seats. A gentleman never forces others to stare at his backside. And that's the end of chapter one. Chapter two, a gentleman gets dressed. In warm weather, a gentleman always wears an undershirt. Unless he is a Texas Ranger or a cattle rancher, a gentleman does not wear cowboy boots with a suit. When a gentleman wears a double-breasted suit, he never leaves the jacket unbuttoned. A gentleman's pants cuffs fall in a gentle break over his shoes. When he stands, his socks do not show. A gentleman clips his nose hairs and the unsightly hair in his ears. As he grows older, he may need to trim his eyebrows. A gentleman tucks his undershirt into his undershorts. A gentleman does not carry unnecessary paraphernalia in his pockets. A bulky key ring or a Swiss army knife destroys the line of even the most expensive pair of slacks. A gentleman has his shoe shined. A gentleman and his cologne. A gentleman considers cologne intimate apparel. It should not cause comment, positive or negative, among other people in the room. Instead, it should be saved as a pleasant surprise for people with whom he makes close physical contact. A gentleman understands that cologne is, after all, an accessory. It is not to be used as a substitute for deodorant. A dab on either side of the neck with another drop on a gentleman's pocket handkerchief is quite enough. When used in excess, cologne is annoying and raises questions about what smells are being covered up. Any time a person can identify the brand of scent that a man is wearing, he is wearing too much. When the weather is cold, a gentleman always wears gloves, and not just to keep his hands warm. He knows that cold fingers do not make for a pleasant handshake. If there is no polish involved, a gentleman occasionally has a manicure. A gentleman always lets his suit jacket or sports coat air out overnight before he returns it to the closet. A gentleman feels no necessity to wear socks after Memorial Day, at least in casual situations. If he is Southern, he may not even wear them to church. When to wear brown shoes. A gentleman knows that even today, black shoes are considered more formal, businesslike, and serious than brown shoes. In fact, in certain businesses, the legal profession, for instance, or banking, black shoes remain the only truly acceptable footwear. On the other hand, if a gentleman is in a situation where a brown or green suit or sports coat would be acceptable, in an office with a more relaxed dress code, or at a dressy sporting event, for example, his brown shoes will serve him well. However, a gentleman never wears brown shoes to a funeral or to a wedding. If he is fortunate enough to have a long life, he will live through many weekends, and his brown loafers will get plenty of wear. A gentleman and his cap. A gentleman will probably own a stack of baseball caps, which he wears after work, on weekends, or on casual days at the office. He may feel that a beloved baseball cap is almost a part of his body, but he should never forget that it is still a hat and that common courtesy demands it be treated as such. A gentleman does not wear his cap inside most public buildings, especially houses of worship. Traditionally, a gentleman would, would remove his hat if he were greeting a woman or being introduced to a new acquaintance of either sex. If a man wears a cap to cover up an unwashed mass of hair or to disguise a balding head, then need, he need not remove it. He gives tug to his cap brim out of respect for the other person, and as a wishful acknowledgement of courtesy long past. A gentleman washes his hair regularly, and he makes every effort to prevent dandruff. When a gentleman feels the urge to color his mustache, he, save, he shaves his mustache off. If a gentleman is given to wearing outlandish hats, such as a deerstalker or a Russian sable cap with ear flaps, 
he understands that he will probably attract attention. A gentleman never wears a belt when he is wearing suspenders. When a gentleman wears his black tie with the wing collar, he always positions the points of the collar behind the tie. That way, the ends of the tie can help hold the stiffened collar down. A gentleman ties his own tie, especially if it is a bow tie, especially if it is black. A gentleman's shirt studs need not match his cufflinks precisely, however, they always complement each other. When a gentleman wears a cummerbund, he makes sure the pleats are turned up. In that way, they can actually be used as tiny secret pockets, perhaps for the safekeeping of theater tickets. When to wear a tuxedo. A gentleman never wears a tuxedo before six o'clock, no matter what anyone else does. If he owns his dinner clothes, the correct term for what is known as a tuxedo, he wears them anytime the invitation says black tie or black tie optional. Likewise, if he is attending any formal event, a wedding reception or a dance that begins after eight in the evening, he may assume that black tie is appropriate. However, if he knows that other guests at the party are unlikely to be dressed in dinner clothes, he plays it safe and wears a dark suit. If the invitation does not indicate any dress code or if black tie optional is suggested, a gentleman does not feel obligated to rent dinner clothes. In such situations, his dark suit will serve him perfectly well. And this is how to tie a bow tie, so I'm not going to go through that. A gentleman never colors his hair. Although a gentleman usually takes his shirts to a laundry, he also knows how to use an iron and a can of spray starch. A gentleman owns at least one pair of black lace-up shoes. Even if a gentleman has to rent his dinner clothes, he wears something that is not borrowed. A good pair of links is enough. When a gentleman wears a vest, he leaves the bottom button undone. When a gentleman outgrows his clothes, he gives them away to a charity. He does not pretend that someday he will lose weight. When and if he does lose weight, he certainly will not want to celebrate by wearing out-of-date clothes. A gentleman never wears a button-down collar with a bow tie. When necessary, a gentleman has his shoes resold. A gentleman never wears the same pair of blue jeans two days in a row. A gentleman's pants are always cuffed except for his blue jeans and his formal trousers. A gentleman never creases ironed. Excuse me. A gentleman never creases ironed into the legs of his jeans. And that is the end of chapter two. So I think I'm going to stop there. And next episode we'll pick up with chapter three. A gentleman goes to dinner. So like I said, I really like these books. I think they're. They just offer, like I said, pretty common advice, or at least something that uh, once people hear it go, of course, that's just common sense. But again, I, uh, I never think there's anything wrong with being reminded of it. So hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If you want me to continue it, I, uh, I will be happy to, and I probably will, um, just because I think... Uh, I think it's pretty interesting, but who knows, maybe I'm an oddball. At any rate, um, it's about 4 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to get to get to sleep. But um, I wish you all the best, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.